Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome to a new StarCraft 2 Heart of the Swarm video. Today we're going to be talking about a super basic Protoss build order for new players that are new to StarCraft 2. Maybe you just now got the game, uh, maybe you actually just completed the single player and maybe you've messed around with the races a little bit, but now you're actually ready to take it to another step. See, the thing about build orders is that it actually allows you to basically combine a whole lot of knowledge of a whole lot of pro gamers, to squeeze it all together and go for the best timing attack that you can possibly go for. Now, if you're completely new to StarCraft 2, you might be wondering, how what is a timing attack? Well, a timing attack means that you're trying to push out versus your opponent as soon as one or more more upgrades finish. You know that could for example be like whenever a plus one attack finishes or maybe when you have like two stargates out and you line them up perfectly to make like three void rays go out at the perfect time, you know? That sort of attack is usually referred to as a timing attack. Now in this video I'm going to explain you a very very basic attack that is called the foregate. Now the build order that I'm going to be discussing in this video is one of these timing attacks. Now you might be wondering where's the timing attack in this? Well you make four gateways and you make sure that the warp gate upgrade which allows you to transfer those four gateways into warp gates finishes up at the exact same time so you can actually warp in units all over the map right away as soon as you have a proxy pylon. This is probably considered the most easy aggressive build order in StarCraft 2 and should help you out especially if you're completely new. You don't really need to know much about any opponent, you can do this on every single map in every single game versus any kind of opponent because obviously warp gate will allow you to warp in anyway and you don't need to worry about things like distance or map positioning or all that. So let's jump straight into the game and I will show you how you do a four gate versus any kind of opponent in StarCraft 2 Heart of the Swarm. So here we are in the game. Now I'm going to show you the most basic variant of the four gate. I'm aware there's a billion different version of its Pretty much some of them use a mothership core some of them use second gases you can add blink you can hold all you know just all kinds of fancy stuff but honestly i'm going to show you the most basic version this means that we're gonna make mostly stalkers and zealots now the first building will be a pylon and we're gonna throw that down at the nine supply mark if you take a look at the top right corner of the screen you can see it's nine out of ten supply which means that i'm gonna probe off the mineral line and i'm gonna make a pylon right there at nine supply while constantly producing probes now we're gonna try and hit around 16 probes on minerals and 3 probes on gas because that is ideal. To do this perfectly however, we will need to make sure we spend our chrono boost properly. So we're gonna spend our first chrono boost right when this pylon finishes and do it on the nexus to boost out those probes. Now we're gonna only do a chrono boost on the main nexus twice, after that we spend everything else on the warp gate ability. At 12 supply, I'm gonna pull a probe off the mineral line once more. I'm pulling it a little bit early to make a gateway right there. After that, I'm gonna use this same probe for scouting purposes. Right now, I'm going back into the probe production and I'm gonna use my second chrono boost right as I start probe production once more. And this is the very last chrono boost that I spend on probes. Right now, I'm gonna start my gas geyser, so another 14 gas geyser. So, so far, it's been 9 pylon, 12 gateway, and 14 gas geyser. Now I'm just going to be producing probes non-stop until I'm at 16 out of 24 on my main nexus and 3 out of 3 on my gas geyser. The next building that I'm going to create is another pylon. I'm going to put that behind the first one and that is around the 15 to 16 supply mark. Now I notice, okay, my opponent is not here because I'm actually not playing versus an opponent right now. It's just for educational purposes. But right when my gateway finishes, I'm going to put a cybernetic core right next to it. And I'm going to stop pro production for a second to start a zealot. So right when the gateway finishes, what you do is start a cybernetic score as well as a zealot before going back into pro production. And now I start pro production once more. Now the pro that I was scouting with is actually safely hiding around the third base of my opponent. And that one is actually very important because later I'm going to use that probe to make a proxy pylon with. So I can actually warp in on the other side of the map. So it's very crucial that we keep that scouting probe alive. Right when the cybernetic score finishes, I'm going to start the warp gate upgrade right away as well as a stalker from the gateway. I'm gonna rally this stalker straight on top of the zealot that just moved out and if you can spare the APM you can use this zealot to actually start poking out a little bit. However, right now we are about to be max saturated as you can see 3 out of 3 in gas and about to have 16 out of 16 so I'm just gonna stop pro production right now and start saving up minerals. All the while I'm chrono boosting my cybernetic score all the time. The next 3 buildings we make is 3 more gateways which cost 450 minerals so here we go that's 1, 2, and the third gateway going down right there, which adds up in total to four gateways. I keep chrono boosting the cybernetic core warp gate upgrade, because as soon as that finishes, it should line up perfectly. 
Now this is also the point where I start making a bunch of proxy pylons. One is going to be a little bit further away of my opponent, um, just you know for safety purposes if in case he manages to scout me, but the second one I'm going to build quite a bit closer to his natural. So here we go, my Zealot has arrived on the other side of the map as well, my Stalker is about to, and once more, if you can spare the APM, you can try and micro those around, but it's most important that you actually finish all these buildings at the good timing. So this probe is going to be crucial, right now he managed to put up two proxy panels already, and the closer I get to his base, obviously the closer I can warp into the inevitable fight. So there we go, my warp gate finished right now, and I'm gonna be morphing all these gateways into warp gates, and right this is finished, I will start a bunch of stalkers right now, and this is crucial, you need to move up that ramp right away. Now if you take a look at the clock, it was right before the six minute mark. Now, as long as I have gas available, I will actually warp in stalkers. However, as you can see, right now I don't have that much gas anymore, so whenever it's necessary, I will switch out to zealots as well. So here we go, I'm gonna be with my second warp in, two zealots and two stalkers. And if you want to be absolutely perfect, what you want to do is make sure that your Zealots go up the ramp first, followed by the Stalkers, just because they tank a whole lot more damage than Stalkers do. And just keep warping in and keep attacking your opponent, and this should be an easy win in most of the lower leagues. Now as far as practice goes, what I would really advise you to do is open up a custom game and add nobody but yourself as the Protoss race, okay? You load up the game and you click return to game because you will instantly be victorious. And then that way, you can actually practice this build order without having to worry about an opponent. So make sure you hit the exact same timing as I did in this game, so you can actually practice this until you do that. And it might take you maybe 10 games, maybe it might take you like 20 games if you're completely new, but once you figure that out, and then jump to the ladder and actually play versus real opponents, it will be so, so much easier, because that way you don't really need to think about it anymore, and you can just naturally progress um, in your skill level in StarCraft 2. So yeah, that is pretty much it. If you have any questions, feel free to post them right below that like button in the comment section below. Also, if you're more interested in the written version of this build order, which is easier for some people, feel free to check the link in the description as well. It will take you straight to my website and um, you can actually read it there, so you can maybe like write it down or put it on your other monitor whenever you're playing uh, versus anyone. Please hit that subscribe button below as it helps me out a ton and you will get a little notification as soon as I upload new content. Well thank you guys all for watching, have an amazing day, do not forget to smile and I will see you in the next video. Bye! Hello everyone, my name is Loka and welcome to a new video for StarCraft 2 Heart of the Swarm. In this video I'm going to be covering a very basic build order for the race Zerg. Now